Okay, so these, these case studies are uh, of international sustainability initiatives, uh, planning for disasters using culture and social relationships. We have three uh, um, papers in this area that we're going to um, hear from the authors of. The first one, uh, the title of the paper is um, uh, Experiences and Results of a Participatory, Participatory Workshop on Seismic Risk Reduction in Student Population of uh, the City of Lima, Peru. It's going to be presented by Sandra Santa Cruz, um, who, who will also introduce the uh, rest of her authors uh, when she starts the paper. Good morning. Good Thank morning. you. Thank you very much, Brett. Well, my name is Sandra Santa Cruz. I work at the Catholic University in Peru. Um, I'm here to present to you um, this work that's titled The Experiences and Results of a Participatory Workshop on Seismic risk reduction and student population of the city of Lima in Peru. In the first part of my presentation, I will describe the situation of the student population. Next, I will explain the approach to face this problem. And finally, I will present the results and conclusions of our work. Let us start describing the problem. Um, as you know, scientific research, experimental development, and technological innovation are creating solutions to improve living conditions and quality of life. But the occurrence of a disaster um, can change this tendency mainly for the most vulnerable people. The situation also would reduce the possibility for development, for development, sorry, because the most vulnerable people are, in general, the less resilient. So uh, it, uh, it, uh, the behavior of the most vulnerable people and, and resilient is shown in this figure uh, in red line. The most recent great earthquake near Lima was the Pisco earthquake in 2007. It not only occurs material and human losses, but broke the fabric, so, uh, sorry, the social fabric which affect its normal operation. Eventually, a similar event could hit Lima. The picture on the right is an, um, the Pisco earthquake. Uh, what happens in Pisco? Our study is focused in the student population of public schools. Their situation is risky due to significant factors at different scales. As you see in the um, uh, factors in the city level and the neighborhood level, in the building of the school, and in the student population themselves. The importance of school facilities lies not only in the normal operation and continuity of classes, but in its position uh, as one of the areas of reference for the affected community after a disaster. In the urban scale, large proportion of public school in Lima is located in areas of expansion of the city. The map shows these areas in red. The pictures of the left show how do they look, how um, how do they uh, sorry how they look like. These areas were originated from an informal pattern since 1950. 
Therefore, they do not have infrastructure nor public spaces with optimum conditions for ability. The red zone is also the one with less income. The zone in blue is the one with more income, and the image of the right shows an example of this zone. In the neighborhood scale, malpractice arises as a result of informality of the constructions and a poor control over the standards. These slides show examples of malpractices in construction around a school in Lima. For instance, there is no sidewalks because of this construction here. Uh, there are dangerous panels that can fall in an earthquake like this, and these constructions that are um, uh, don't meet the standards. These are uh, electricity installations, junk, um, um, and so on. These situations also increase the risk of the student population that needs to evacuate after an earthquake. Moreover, it could hinder rehabilitations and the return to normal operation after the earthquake. In the building scale, the situation is also highly risky. Our estimations say that in an occasional earthquake of 8.2, only 455 buildings would be damaged and could be used immediately. More than 1,000 would have a little damage and maybe can be used after a simple rehabilitation work of about two weeks, maybe. 3,000 buildings would reach a high damage state, but uh, unfortunately with no collapse and more than 100, 138 would be in a critical situation that could affect the life of the students during the earthquake. Um, let me say that uh, this scenario um, would be similar to the situation report in Pisco after the earthquake of 2007, where 90% of schools were inoperative and 10% had minor damage. Um, in this context, establishing corrective measures for risk reduction are imperative. While there are efforts from different disciplines to address the problem, they are not integrated nor disseminated. In other words, this problem becomes a challenge because of the great amount of population at risk, the lack of capacity to attend all simultaneously, and the requirement of a transdisciplinary and participatory approach. To face this situation, we decided to identify stakeholders and invite them to a workshop for exchange of experiences and knowledge in the topic of risk management. The workshop was held in Lima at the, at the Catholic University in September of 2014. Sorry, 2014. We invite people uh, from the infrastructure office of the Secretary of Education and regional authorities um, also, we have academics in civil engineering, architecture, urbanism, and psychology. The main objective of the workshop was to raise awareness of the possible consequences of earthquake on a school population and find alternative solutions in a participatory manner to reduce the risk of the student population. The workshop consists in two sessions. The first session was um, 
consists in developing a risk diagnosis by identifying the main factors to consider for seismic risk assessment. In the second session, we sought to raise an attempt methodology that can be useful um, for an appropriate, um, sorry, for a, a strategy to reduce risk. Both sessions were divided in two parts. <clears throat> One was a forum of discussion and presentations from the experts, and the second um, part was for group work. Each group had participants of different disciplines and sectors. We mm, mix up them all, and we provide them material to work. This material uh, were maps and data, real maps and the real data, uh, of three representative zones of Lima, so they could work with this material. At the end of the session, they present the results to the rest of the assistants. Uh, well, let's see some results and conclusion of the group work. Um, this is one of the work of a group. They, in a participatory manner, uh, listed eight factors uh, that were identif identified uh, for a diagnosis of risk some of them were presented by the expert previously in the presentations, and, but some of them were identified by the group. Uh, the main uh, thing that um, they uh, said that uh, was that the community organization must be taken into account. Uh, the community organization, because it gives an idea of the level of preparation and education to face disasters and their degree, and their degree of relationship with the school, from the community to the school. Then, the proposed methodology is to use a territorial approach based on the eight factors aforementioned to, identif to identify the schools that should be reinforced by the government in a first state of mitigation. In this map, we have divided Lima City to see all factors together only for illustrative purposes. The methodology should prioritize schools with good community organization, good accessibility and basic services, more free area, and those schools located uh, near, um, oh sorry, far from other schools and or that um, schools that have more population. The methodology also should prioritize the building with more fragility a less socioeconomic level, with great possibilities of damage in an earthquake that can affect to less resilient people. Summarizing, the methodology will prioritize schools with more possible consequence and more possibilities for being useful in post-disaster situation. There exist some tools for decision making, such as multi-criteria decision analysis, uh, that can be used to rank the schools, taking into account all of these factors. There is a constraint uh, for this approach. The methodology must ensure uh, life safety of the student, regardless of the other factors. So, uh, for instance, uh, this school made of adobe probably would collapse in a moderate earthquake, and it is unacceptable. So, uh, 
The methodology must ensure that the school is reinforced, at least to avoid collapse. This can be done by wrapping the adobe walls with geom geomesh, as you may see in the picture on the right. I'm going to finish with the uh, conclusions and divide the conclusion into parts, the conclusion about the workshop and the conclusions about the methodology proposed. About the workshop, uh, there is optimism in continuing working in the problem from different um, disciplines, but always from a comprehensive and transdisciplinary vision. Also, it has it has been noticed that it is required a broad and comprehensive approach that does not just see the risk as the sum of several factors, but as the interaction and coexistence of them. Oh. About the methodology, well, it must take into account a special relationship of the school with the city in different scales. In the short term, it must improve schools that are a menace to the life of the students. And it must improve schools in a comprehensive manner, prioritizing the most risky from the physical point of view and more useful for post-disaster situations. Well, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.